Borum Solcon, how are you guys? Man, Rob Roy here with the weekly teaching team. So good to be here. Uh, guys, go ahead and grab a copy of the Word uh, if you want to take some notes. And of course, uh, we're going to grab some coffee or some water. But first, let's take this into prayer, guys. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you so very much for this day, for all of our blessings. Uh, we just appreciate this time together so very much. We appreciate the technology that allows us to see each other face to face and do life together. Um, Lord, I just pray that the message that you've put into my heart uh, to speak about today is going to be powerful and edifying to not only uh, those who hear it, but also to myself. And I just pray that uh, the words coming out of my mouth uh, are from the Spirit, and I am just simply the mouthpiece, and I need, I need to get out of the way. And we pray all of this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, guys, as always, I salute you, give you a cheers, praise to God. All right, so let's dive in, guys. Today I want to talk about discipleship. Now that's a word we hear a lot uh, <clears throat> in our Christian community and, and, and in, this, uh, in this community that we have ourselves here in Gaborum. But I want to take a little bit more of a deep dive of what discipleship is. Now, when I say that word, a lot of people may get the um, first impression that discipleship is somebody speaking to you about something uh in Christianity and, and maybe you're sitting there with your, your notepad and you're taking lots of notes and you feel that um, someone is discipling you, someone is teaching you the way of Christianity, somebody is, is edifying you and, and taking helping you along that spiritual journey path. Um, what I can say is that is partially true, uh, but let's talk about this for a second. So. Um, the word uh, disciples is actually, you know, it's, it's a Greek word. It comes from uh, methetes. I hope I said that right. And it literally means learner. So <clears throat> it is true that in discipleship, we are learners. Um, you know, we, we go to, you know, such as uh, things like such as the Men of, Men of Valor conference where we're learning from, um, speakers and we're also learning just by hanging out with other guys and, and seeing what they have to say about uh, you know biblical things and that sort of stuff uh, so we're learning we're, we're receiving a lot of that information and we're processing it but <clears throat> we need to take our being a disciple further uh, we need to get out of the mindset that we just constantly need to be fed by other people we need to also understand that we have to take what we've learned from others as well as our own discernment from being in the word and uh, putting it to use for the kingdom, okay? So being a disciple just isn't always about receiving, uh, but it's also going out and, and teaching others and, and building them and, and discipling them. And so the, the process continues on its way, so we are making disciples who are then also making their own disciples, okay? So let's take an example. Uh, Jesus, of course, he invited uh, 12 very select men. He invited them into this group, uh, and certainly he was a, a huge, uh, he was the master discipler. Uh, he was always uh, feeding them with, you know, information and, and just teaching them and edifying them. Um, so he was a master discipler, but here's the thing, what happened, uh, you know, upon Jesus's death, what happened to these men? Well, one of them, uh, apparently didn't take his discipleship too much to heart because we know what happened to him, but, uh, the remaining disciples, what did they do? They just didn't sit there and, and complain about, well, no one's feeding us any more, you know, discipleship anymore. No, what they did is they went out into all the world and they disciples. So what they did is they took what they learned and they put it into action. And that's that's what I'm trying to get here, guys. We need to take what we have within us and we need to put it out into action. We need to seek 
other people uh, and get them to uh, come alongside us in, in a relationship to where we can build off of each other. Because um, there's just so much wisdom from other people. Uh, and, and like Jay Osmond said in his weekly teaching recently, you know, the differences between people can actually be a good thing because these are opportunities to, uh, you know, listen to what they have to say. And then, of course, you can respond. But ultimately, what does the Bible say about this kind of stuff? So this is this is what putting discipleship in action is. OK, so let me just refer to some of my uh, notes here. I want to take you to uh, Hebrews five. And we're looking at verses 11 through 14. So what it says is um, we have much to say about this, but it is hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. What's happening is he's talking to he's talking about people that feel they need to constantly be fed. It's almost like a it's almost like a, a victim mentality. It's like, no, you need to take care of me. You need to take care of me. So he continues. Uh, in fact, Though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So growing in your faith, guys, is, I mean, obviously we need to go to the word. And of course, being in brotherhood with, with other godly men and, and, you know, men's groups. Uh, and of course, being here in the Gavorum, this is all awesome, great stuff. But uh, like, like my notes say, growing in your faith it's not about finding the best teachings or that you're in the best small group. Um, the challenge is for us to become active, self-motivated, self-feeding learners. So taking everything, our experiences, uh, being in the word, it's not just about always just receiving the word and, and just sitting there with it, you know, like, you know, like, putting it all in her basket, like, like, like scripture says, and just leaving it all to yourself. You know, it's like, well, Hey, I've got my salvation. I'm good to go. Uh, no, that's not what we're called to do guys. We are called to learn about our faith and then to go out and profess that faith and create new disciples. So God willing, we can live long and bring as many to Christ with us before our time is up here. So, and there's there's uh, two major points I want to say about discipleship uh, that are key. First is cooperation. We need to cooperate with God uh, first and foremost. We need to cooperate with Him um, and ensure that we are uh, receiving what's being said to us through the Word. And that's first and foremost. But also we need to receive what other brothers uh, or other fellow Christians are, are pouring into us. And, and maybe them, maybe there's times of conviction. Uh, I hope there is. I hope, the, I hope you got somebody that's, that can call you out uh, because we all need to be called out. So we need to build those relationships in cooperation with other people uh, because the, the goal is, is to advance God's kingdom. So we need to be on board with what scripture says and what we need to do. And this is living in cooperation with God. The second point, guys, is investment. We need to take time and invest uh, in not only ourselves with, with, with you know, feeding ourselves with, with the word and, and with other discipleship, but we need to invest. We need to turn that investment around and give it out what we receive we need to give out. And I understand that um, it can be difficult to receive sometime, but part of our discipleship is also investing 
in others and allowing them to invest in us. Okay, so we need to just continue to put ourselves out there, get, our, get out of our comfort zones, guys, and invest in people. Um, I'll mention it again one more time. The, the Men of Valor Conference, I saw a ton of men taking the time to invest in other brothers. And I tell you what, man, God was on the move there. Some incredible, incredible things happened. And that's because these men took the time to invest in other men, which is cooperating with God. So guys, I hope, I hope this helps somebody out there today. I know it helped me. I appreciate your time. And, uh, just remember, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Love you guys.